there's not much time. You got to be miles away from here for dawn. Where is she? Follow that north star. If there are no stars, just follow the river. Listen for them. Fear is your enemy. Whoa. Easy now. I'm gonna be free or die. favorite scene in a movie was when Harriet was crossing mm -hmm. into Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that sky, it was just so beautiful. Okay, so that was the best day. I mean, there were many good days, but yeah. that day was magical. Yeah. Wasn't it? It was, it was absolutely magical. And it was, it, one of the things was, you get to a certain point in a movie, and the crew, everybody in the cast and crew, uniquely, in my experience, knew why they were there every day. Like, it's like, we're doing it for Harriet. We were like, everybody was down for Harriet. Um, however, it gets to a point in a movie where, you know, especially hard movies, it's hard, you're, it's, you're cranky. So we woke up that day and it was pouring. Everybody's just cranky. It's harder to get stuff done. It's just, it's just, yeah. She had, she had four changes. She, she doesn't like to, um, Cynthia didn't like to go back and forth between Minty and Harriet. Harriet has a big character arc. Okay. And Minty's almost different than right. Harriet. Right. And so, um, it, it, Besides costume and hair not liking it, just because it, it's a big change. So he did like four changes that, that day and kind of went back and forth, back and forth. Um, so it's getting later and later. Time. So the line producer is cranky. The first AD is cranky. Hair and makeup is cranky. Cynthia is cranky. <laughs> Everybody's super cranky and it's raining. And, it, and at a certain point, I was advised, you know, you're never going to get that. But of course, I'm a director, so I've had a plan of where I need to be on this for this particular scene, and I've scouted it. And it's like, um, we can't even. They're they're like just abandoned. We can't even get the trucks up there. It's so muddy. We have to like schlep on foot. You know. But fortunately, we left the crane up there. You know, we left certain pieces of equipment okay. up there, and so we, you know, we slog up to the top of the hill. I'm rushing. I'm begging hair and makeup to get Cynthia through the works. Cynthia's kind of like, fuck it, I'm coming right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, we even asked her. And she has to go up we, on her We all have up. to get up there. And now I'm like, oh, please, God, have the crane built. Like, you guys, build the crane before she gets here because <laughs> if she has to wait for us and I've rushed her, you know, it, it's, and everybody's just working at maximum capacity. Right. Yeah. And the sky's black. You know, my first AD's going, Casey, look at this guy. I'm saying, see that little blue patch? Right, the horizon. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she comes up. The moment the crane is built, the moment we're ready, the sky parts, and that sun comes yes. through. That sun comes Gorgeous. through. Gorgeous. And uh, we did one take. And I understood. See, is there a rainbow, rainbow that falls? Double rainbow behind us. Double rainbow. Oh, wow. And, and the, the whole. Uh, I went into the DP's tent, mm -hmm. you know, to watch. Uh, he has the really good monitor. Yes. And um, as the sun flares, he giggled. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes, like <laughs> and, and we walk out, and the entire crew had burst into tears. Wow. And they all got their cameras, and they're shooting the sky, and they're shooting the rainbow, and, and and it was um. So that was a great day because it kind of like everybody got right. behind again. Yeah. It's like remember why we're here? Yeah, you know. <laughs> it, so that was that was a really great day. But we had we had a lot of great days. very, um, it was way less gruesome or graphic mm -hmm. than I expected mm -hmm. compared to other slave mm -hmm. narratives that I've seen in the past. Was that intentional? Yeah, I mean, part of it was, I've seen those movies, so I've loved those movies, you know, it's been done. Yeah. And it's been done very beautifully and effectively, and, and not to diminish that at all, um, what I was trying to talk about was, it's funny when, when, when I hear 
that it's not brutal because I think it's very brutal but um, but it's brutal to me a mother making a decision am I going to run or stay with my children who've been taken away and yes. hidden from me yeah. that's brutal to me yeah. a, a man who leaves his wife shortly after childbirth yes. because yeah. he's going to be sold or he's got to run that's brutal yeah. to me seeing your sister's taken away you know screaming that's brutal so I wanted to talk about that type of brutality right. you know separation of families and and um, the decimation of, of African American families through through slavery and, and the choices that people had to make these horrible horrible choices I think that was one of the most powerful things about the film mm-hmm. was um, similar to the TV show that got canceled under mm-hmm. right. where you saw the slaves fighting the resistance. back and yeah, yeah that was in seeing the Philadelphia portion mm-hmm. of the resist- resistance mm-hmm. and Janelle Monae's character and mm-hmm. Leslie jo- um, Odom Jr. that was very remarkable mm-hmm. and um, I think it made it tolerable for a younger generation because mm-hmm. I think um, that part of the reason that underground wasn't it was successful, but the part of the reason that it got canceled was that a lot of younger people don't really right. associate with the slavery narratives. Mm-hmm. And I'm 46, mm-hmm. so I kind of came up at a time where Roots was the mm-hmm. miniseries mm-hmm. of the 70s, and in the 80s we were still watching these movies, but a lot of mm-hmm. younger people aren't making those mm-hmm. connections. Mm-hmm. Well, they need to, yeah. first of all, because we need to be connected to history, because yeah. we need to watch out for Absolutely. it so it doesn't come back. Well, I think this film does a very good job. Thank with, you. You know, connecting them to that portion of the mm-hmm. I remember um, reading Jamie Foxx said the Jingle Unchained mm-hmm. that he kept Fred Hammond's No Weapon on rotation. He said what? He had Fred Hammond's mm-hmm. No Weapon formed mm-hmm. against me um, on rotation to kind of keep the mood solid and mm-hmm. to keep that warrior spirit mm-hmm. on the set. Was there anything that you did in particular or maybe a cast member that you're aware of that did similar to keep spirits high and keep people motivated in the warrior spirit? I made everybody listen to Cinnamon. Um, Cinnamon. There's something about Cinnamon that had the, it had the movement and the soul and the triumph. You know, and to me, um, Cinnamon was what I wanted the movie to feel like. Wait, I ask really quickly. My site is called Music Movie Store, so have the Harriet biopic. Mm-hmm. If you could make a biopic about any in his hair, living or dead, who would it be? Why? Um, there's something about Lena Warren that's very interesting to me. I think she's a very interesting story. You know, she there, there many things happened, you know. Um, and found her true love with a white man, you know, and was kind of the she was such um, a token in these in these films that they would basically like she said she would be pinned to a wall like a butterfly singing. You know, and we couldn't interact with the other characters. In the South, they had to cut her roles out. Made her very bitter, but um, anyway, she ends up befriending Paul Robeson. He's a communist. Um, she ends up getting blacklisted. She, it's just a really, really, really interesting story. So I like that story. But I think there are a lot. You know, and one just leads to the other. And it's like, and then there's Paul Robeson. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a really interesting story. Um, God, I I don't know. I mean, I, there's so many. There's so many. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ready? <laughs>